What's up, pool players? Josh Powell here. You're watching Amateur Pool, and today we're going to find out what happens when the other team puts a three against your seven. So the match today is exactly that. It's myself, Josh Powell, skill level seven, versus Adam Clark. He's a skill level three. The race here is six to two. We're playing eight ball. I've got to win six games. He's got to win two games. So it's a, it's a tall order, you know, for him and for me, to be honest with you. And you don't see the strategy too often on eight ball. You do see it in nine ball quite a bit. And in fact, in nine ball, it can be rather effective uh, because you go by point system. They don't have to actually win a game. But in eight ball, you have to actually win a game, you know. So we'll see what happens here. I won the lag. I broke. Made a stripe. I'm going to shoot at that 11 ball up in the corner here. And miss it. I'm going to miss it. You know, just bobble it in the pocket is what I like to do. All right, so Adam's up at the table. This is our first look at Adam. Now, I'll tell you guys this before we even get into this match. He's a very strong skill level three. He does a lot of stuff that you don't see skill level threes do, like English and shapes. Um, so it's a fun, it's a fun match. We're in for a treat. He's going to shoot this one in the side. Good shot. Good shot there. Lined up nice for that five straight down. That three ball down there in the corner makes that a huge pocket. So there's almost no way he's going to miss this. Did you guys see how he put follow and a little spin to get up on the three ball? That's what I mean by a high, a high skill level three. In fact, he'll probably be going up to a four pretty soon, I would bet. He does, uh, does a lot of things that you don't see threes do too often, so he was a good shot. He's dead on that three, you know, and if he hits this gently, he can come up two rails for either the two or the six or the four. Okay, that spin got away from him a little bit. He came all the way up table. Now he's blocked. Uh, my 14 ball is blocking him from hitting any of them solids down at the other end of the table. So the only ball he can see clear is the seven ball, but don't think he can make it anywhere. A good safety here would be to nick the edge of the seven, play the cue ball off one rail back to the bottom rail behind my stripe. If he could stick me right behind my stripe, it would, it would make it a little tough for me anyway. He may be trying that, it looks like. Yeah, I think that might be what exactly what he was trying. It was a good attempt at it. All right, he left me that shot down there on the... Uh, 12 ball, I think it is, a purple one, whichever, whichever ball it is. Purple one. The purple one. I'm going to make this slow with a little left spin so it kills off that rail below the side pocket. I want to shoot the 15 ball next. Just like that. Now, it looks like I got enough angle on this 15. I could either draw back up towards the top end of the table, or I could stop right there and shoot the 9. Okay, I drew back up. Now I can shoot these two in the side pocket. Should be a run out here. We'll have to see. You know, you know I like to I like to not get out when I'm supposed to. <laughs> like that. Missed that shot straight in. I rolled it though. That's why I should have hit that with a little firmness. I always tell um my wife and, and a couple of my buddies I play with, hit it with confidence, you know, hit it firm. Be confident. Don't try to roll it unless you have to. Just not as not as um, accurate when you roll a ball like that. Oof, he missed. He's giving me another chance here. I'm going to shoot that 13 in the side probably, and I'll probably use draw so I can open my nine ball back up because right now my nine ball is a problem ball. Yep. Left myself with a tough shot, though. I mean, shouldn't be a tough shot, but... Uh, <laughs> Lately, this is feeling like a tough shot. If I just cinch it with stop, though, I can get out here. Bobble, bobble. Bobble and pockets, man. If I had a pool nickname, it would be Bobble, Bobblehead. <laughs> just kidding. I'd probably be, let's see, Corey Duels, the Prince of Pool. I would be the pimp of pool. Self-proclaimed. Let me know. Comment down below. What would your nickname be if you had a if you had a pro pool nickname? 
like the magician or the South Dakota kid or uh, the Prince of Pool, the Iceman. You know, there's hundreds, no, hundreds of nicknames out there. I have no idea what mine would be. Mine would be the, the moron, the maroon. <laughs> All right, he's taking a coach here. Coach is telling him, I think you're screwed, man. And he's like, I don't want to be screwed. That's why I called a coach. And the coach is like, well, you should have called me up about two shots ago. <laughs> That's how it usually works, right? Uh, people wait until after they're in trouble to call a coach. If they call a coach a little earlier, the coach could help them stay away from that trouble a lot easier than they can help them get out of trouble usually. No sponsorship yet. In case you were wondering, a little Timmy. Maybe, yeah, he hammered it. Round and round, round she goes. Where it stops? I don't know. Not in the hole. That's where it stopped. All right, I'm gonna shoot the combo. Come back out to the middle of the table-ish. And I can play this either way. I'm going right for the 14, so it looks like I'm gonna play it that way, but I could also play the nine, then the 14. Either way works here. I kind of like the other way because this way I have to draw back. The other way I don't. Apparently I was feeling feeling fine with my draw stroke, so no, no worries there. Just want a little bottom and right on this one and be careful not to scratch in the side pocket. Got it. Should be all she wrote for the first rack here. Marking my pocket up. It's the first time I've ever played this guy, so definitely mark the pocket. Didn't know if he was okay with calling it or not, so we played the correct way, you know. Played like the rules say we should play. One nothing. Now it's a five to two race. I've still got to win five more games. If I want to win this match, he's only got to win two. Went with a second ball break, made a stripe in the side. I've got a couple good shots here. Of course, I could take the, the 11 all the way up, but I don't like that shot if it's on the rail. I've got the 14, that's probably the shot I'll take. I can play that with top and go two rails back out towards the foot spot for the nine ball. Or just hit it soft, one rail, okay. So what I was doing there is coming over to try to, yep, that little group right there is my problem group, right? I have to address that, so I wanted to get on it early. I'm gonna try to play that 10 off of the 15 into the side, and if I can do that, it should open up the whole table for me. That was smart to go over there and play that next. Just like that. Oh, don't put it back in, pro in trouble. Mm. Eek. I think it still goes in the side, though, both of them. I think they both still go in the side. If I make that 15 in the side, I'll use stun or draw with a little right spin. Oh, I drew straight back. Bumped the 8 out into the open, and I got a shot on the 9. That worked out nice. Now, I can make this 9 with straight top nice and easy, and my next ball shoot will be that purple one in the side. Yep. Now from here, I can do that, that stun or that draw with right I was talking about. Probably stun. If I draw, I'll hit the eight ball. And then come off the top rail and back over for that, uh, whatever this other one is on, this, on the side rail. I think it's the 11. <sighs> you got to focus in and make those shots, though, man. Those shots, uh, been bobbling and missing a lot lately. I think um, I'm not practicing as much as I was before. I'm still playing a lot, but I'm not practicing as much. And that's a direct result with me not playing as well. You know, I'd say a month or, month or two ago, I was playing strong. Right now, I'm, I'm not playing like I was. And it's because I'm not practicing as often. I'll get back into that. It's not like riding a bike, guys. If you don't stay on it and keep your craft honed, you'll lose some. It's the consistency that you start losing, you know. You don't really lose the knowledge. You still know how to do it, and you can still execute it. But to execute it on a consistent basis, you have to practice a lot. All right, he missed his shot, but he left me tough here. I don't know. I don't think I can bank the 11 into the side pocket because I think I, I can't avoid the double kiss on that. Um, I may be able to bank it up past the five ball in the corner pocket. 
Yeah, that's where I'm looking right now. And if I do that slow, even if I miss, I may block up that corner pocket so he can't make the five, you know. That would be best case scenario if I miss. Best case scenario would be making it, obviously, but um, best case scenario if I don't make it would be to block that pocket. I just don't want to break out that clutter of three balls he has that right there. <laughs> Dang it, man. That's the only thing I really didn't want to do because as a skill level three, um, if he has to break those out, his chances of running out go way down to, to almost zero. But I broke him out for him, so now he could potentially get out here. You know, all he's got to do is string together six shots. So he's going to take his duck. Yeah, he's going to shoot the one ball neck. He should shoot it soft so he can shoot the six after this. Hit it a little hard, but he came over for the uh, two ball. That's going to work out fine. He almost scratched, though. Now with this ball, I would hit this one with slow with follow and then shoot the six next. I really want that six out of there if I'm shooting right now. It looks like he's putting draw. Yeah, that draw didn't really get him into a good position. He might still be able to shoot the five, um, probably what he'll have to end up do, doing here unless he wants to play a bank. But if he would have hit that slow with top, he could have made the six then made the seven into the side or the corner and came up for the five and he could have got out quite a bit easier. He's calling another coach. We have to see what they tell him here. Coach is pointing at the five. Hey, you gotta shoot that five ball, dog. You know, you done effed up. You gotta take your duck. Try to come back down for one of these. Which he's, he's got the perfect angle. If he just shoots the five, as long as he makes the five and doesn't hit my 15, um, He'll come right down for either the seven or the six. It's a perfect angle, though. Funny how that works, right? Lower skill level player makes a mistake or doesn't get where they want to, and they end up perfect on something else, you know? Oh, yeah, look at that. Came down nice for the six. He may be a little hard. Okay, hard enough for the seven. It's a little bit of a cut on the seven, but if he makes this with his speed being correct, he should go back and forth and have a good shot at that six. See, he needed to hit that hard enough to come back over and then back over again, and he would have ended up nice on that six. Little stuff like that, it's just stuff you learn with time, you know. Think about it. Think, hey, man, I need to hit this a little harder so I can go back and have a shot. Oh, he almost, close. He almost made that bank. It was a good try. He did block that pocket, though. I have the angle on my 15, though. I can come right around and either run into it or shape behind it. I don't like shaping behind it because it's so touchy. Um, I like running into it with an open table like this. Chances are I'm going to come away with a shot. Yeah, that works. See, I have a shot, not a simple one, but I do have them on the 50-yard line. I could go corner or side. I like going side here. Just the shape's a little easier to get on the 8. Yep, go inside pocket, withdraw. I'll come one rail off the top and back down for the eight. Perfect. Now I got the eight in the corner over there. I'll mark it up real quick. Like I said, it's the first time I ever played this guy. Um, so we, I started marking the pocket. He mentioned it to me, I think after this game maybe. Uh, he was like, hey, you know, I'm good with just calling it. So we start calling it after this, but... Wanted to mark it. Always got to follow the rules just in case, you know, you don't want someone to call you on it. All right, two to nothing. Now it's a four to two race. <laughs> four to two race. I only have to get twice as many games as him now. Oh, okay. Ooh, almost scratched. Okay. Looks like I made three balls there. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, I got two stripes and a solid. So the table's open. I can shoot whatever I want here. I don't have to shoot stripes. I don't have to shoot solids. But if I miss, it'll be open for my opponent as well. So you got to keep that in mind. I'm my ball on that seven ball, which I like solids here. If I can stun this over and pop that six ball out of trouble, then I'm really in good shape. Yeah. I would have had to cheat it a bit more in, in order to get that six out of there. Okay, I can shoot the two here, though, um, with a little bottom left, 
and come straight back into the six, I should be able to pop the six out here. If I don't get the six out here, I gotta start really thinking about things because I don't wanna keep making balls unless I can address that six. All right, I got it. Got it out good enough. All right, now I can shoot this five with top. That's gonna probably come into the four ball, I would imagine. It might scrape the, the nine ball too, but it'll come up into the four ball. And uh, it'll, now the table's wide open. I just have to stay down and make my shots. Should be able to get out here. Should, you know, I always say should because if you've watched enough of my videos, you know damn well I don't always get out when I should. Straight top on this one, I want the four ball next. Could have played for the six ball after that too, but I like the four ball better because the six in the side lends for perfect shapes coming up for the eight ball. So I'm gonna make this one slow with a little left and try to uh, give myself an angle for the six in the side that'll lead the cue ball up table. Yeah, just like that. Now, if I don't miss this shot, I should be out here because this cue ball is gonna go right up to where I need it to be. Yeah, looking good, looking good. Looking good, see, now we're calling it. So we had a talk. We had a talk with one another, you know, communicated. You know. That lady, <laughs> super sweet lady, that lady in the hat right there. She's brand new to pool, just started playing. Um, and obviously even people that aren't brand new to pool aren't used to people recording. So she kept coming right in front of the camera. <laughs> I asked her one time, I was like, hey, do you want to sit over here, you know? <laughs> Super nice lady, though. Her and her husband. That's her husband with the backwards hat you just saw on the camera a second ago. All right. So I snapped it off. Second ball hit. That second ball break has been working good. When I, what I mean by second ball break is I'm hitting not the head ball, the ball behind the head ball. And it's working well here. I think I'm stripes. If that 11 ball I was just looking at a minute ago, if that goes past the three, then I have a good opportunity to run out here. I'm not 100% sure it does though. Oh, I slow rolled it. Ah, that's what I was saying uh, a couple racks ago. You know, you don't wanna slow roll stuff unless you have to. Um, you wanna hit it firm with confidence. Um, not just, hit it hard, you know, that's different. You wanna hit it with confidence. You wanna hit it firm enough to where you're controlling what that cue ball does. Uh, you don't want the cue ball to just roll on its own. You know, hit little things in the felt and move left and right. Hit it, hit it with confidence, hit them firm. That's why I missed that shot. That and the fact that I suck, you know. Don't laugh, little Timmy. I don't suck, man. You suck. Get out of here. Get out of here with that garbage. All right, he's gonna draw this, it looks like. Sure did. Ooh, he might have came away nice if that, that one ball goes in the side. Um, man, if he has the angle right, he can get the three ball next, which is really the three and the seven. The three ball, not so much the seven, mostly is his trouble ball here. But if he can drop on that three ball right now because it's a tight shape, he should do it. And then he's got to think about that seven ball. That should be his main focus right now is what to do with the seven ball. Oh, he got perfect on the three. That's nice. He could even shoot the five first if he wants and draw back a little for the three. He could shoot the five and then shoot the two. Problem with that though, he still has to get on the three. If he gets the right angle on the two, he could bump my stripe out of the way. He's going to shoot the five first and I don't, I don't think he's putting draw on it, so he may be rolling forward. Yeah, rolled forward. Okay, he got the right angle, so he can make the two, and that will almost automatically push my stripe out of the way, so his three will be opened up. He still has to get that seven ball, though. See, I'd have been trying to get at that seven ball right from the get here, just because it's the only ball on the table that's a problem right now. So he's, he's going to shoot himself into a corner here. You know, he's going to make the three, and then if he can, he's going to make the six, and then he's going to be sitting there looking at the seven going, what do I do now? You know, you got to address that problem ball before you start making all your other balls. Once you make all your other balls, you got no options. You got no options to get at that problem ball. 
So he's looking at where he can make the six now. And I think he just now realized he's not going to have a shot on that seven. I'd be surprised if he calls. I wouldn't be surprised if he calls a coach here. He's looking at it. He's looking at trying to get it past my 10 in the side. I don't think it goes there. I think the corner is the only place he can really make it. And honestly, if he can make it in the corner with top, he might be able to come off of the seven ball. Okay, he tried the side. Now, the eight ball is my problem ball here, but I've got the 10 ball so close to it that I can pop it out with that. So I'm going to make, I'm gonna, it looks like I'm going to shoot this 11 ball first, and then I should go one rail back over to the other side for one of those two stripes down in there. Need to get one of those two stripes gone, gone as quickly as I can as well. Because both of them so close make it uncomfortable. There I go. Mr. Bobble. Mr. Bobblehead. You know, that's my, uh, that's my pool nickname. Mr. Bobblehead. What a moron, man. He still has that seven ball, so I think I'm still all right here. I'll probably get another shot. Unless he makes a six and banks the seven, he might be able to do that. But I don't know if he has an angle to break the seven out. Unless he cuts the six to this uh, corner pocket closest to the camera, then the cue ball might naturally go break out the seven, but that's a hard shot. We have to see what he does. Let's see, shall we? Shall we? Let's take a look. Let's crack a lacking. He's looking at it. He don't like it. I don't blame him. I don't like it. And I'm not even shooting it, you know? You got to shoot something, though, homie. You got to shoot something. Oh, he tried to thin cut that sucker. And look at this. He would have came up. He would have broke his seven out, but he would have got hooked. All right, he broke the eight out for me. So now I don't have to mess with it. I'm going to play this combo first just because it's the easiest shot on the table. Um, and I'll play it with top because I'd like to roll down and shoot one of those um, stripes next. I can't tell if that's a 9 or the 13 down there, but I'd like to shoot one of those two stripes after this. Didn't quite come down as far as I thought I should have, but I'm still all right. I can shoot it. I'm going to run into that other stripe, but it doesn't matter. I got this one in the pocket right here. Okay. Yeah, see, I'm not, I'm not fully in agreement with the way I'm playing this right now. I mean, it'll work. I could get out this way, but I would have played that other one first and tried to come back for the uh, 10 ball by the eight and then finished on that one in the pocket just because it was right in the pocket. So you can just nick the side and come up to the middle of the table for shapes on the eight very easily. You don't have to manipulate the cue ball angle or, or put English on it or anything. Now, I'm pretty straight on this, so I'm going to have to follow two rails around unless I want to take a real long shot on that other ball, which I do not. Hit it a little too hard. See me tap the table. Universal sign for slow the F down, cue ball. Slow the F down, you know? Universal sign. I'm going to draw this back, and I should be perfect on the 8. Boom. Here we go. Put this eight in the hole. Just like that. Bada bing, bada boom. Bada bing, bang, boom. Now it's an even race. Two games to two games. You know what I'm saying? Side ball break. Okay, made a ball here. I couldn't tell if it was a solid or a stripe. I didn't see what it was. Could count them real quick, but I'm pretty freaking lazy, you know? It's a lot of work counting all them balls. I'm gonna do it. One, two, three, four, five. I think I'm stripes. Pretty sure I'm stripes. Unless I made one of each, I'm not sure. But I think I made stripes here. I'm gonna start with that side pocket shot, and I'm either gonna just run into the seven and nick it, or I'll miss it and come up table. Okay, I nicked it. Came up table, so um, I don't like that 14 ball. I don't like where that 14's at, especially since I put the 7 in front of it. Looking at it right now, I might be able to make it off of the 3 into that side pocket. 
But the three sit in almost dead center of that pocket it looks like. So in order to do that, I have to hit just off center and allow that ball to roll into the pocket. It's a hard shot. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it at all, you know? Yo, Adrian, we did it. Not yet. All right, that's the shot I'm gonna try here. Let's see if I can execute. It's a hard, I doubt I'm gonna make, I'm not making this. Yeah, yeah, I knew, I knew, I knew already. You know, you probably did too. I knew already, Freddy. The machine shop is what it says on the back of his shirt. That's in Flint, Michigan. It's a pretty cool little place. It's a small, small little bar that does a, a lot of like heavy metal concerts and stuff. If you're into that, it's pretty, pretty cool venue. And they get some pretty big acts up there for, for how small of a venue it is. Okay. Good solid shot. He's going to shoot this five next, I think. And if he does, he should float over for a nice shot on that four ball afterwards. He's going to examine the table a little bit. His three ball goes. I know it looks a little awkward, but it's not. It's an easy shot, that three ball. He just has to shape it, right? Shoot the five. He'll, he'll come over for the four. He should come over for the four ball. Oh, don't want to scratch. It was close. He almost scratched. He's got a good shot at the four. Now, if he hit... If he makes this four with the right speed, he may fall perfect on that three ball. But he could also shape the um, the one ball. He could shape the seven ball. He could shape almost anything had he made it, you know. He didn't make the shot. He put that eight ball right where the uh, my other stripe was I was trying to make earlier. What was it the 14 or whatever? I don't like where he put that eight ball, but... I think it's off the rail enough. I could cut it in that side. I'm gonna draw, draw back just a little bit for the 11 probably. Overdrew it, drew it too much. Now I'm looking at either a tough cut on this nine ball that takes me towards the four, or I'm looking at a tough cut on this 11 ball, which comes with a potential scratch. If I, I'm cutting the 11 ball, it looks like. If I do that, I've gotta put inside English, right spin on this and keep it from scratching. This is a tough shot right here. Made it. Hey, I put so much left that I came off the rail and hit the three ball, which brought me away from the scratch. So that worked out nice. Now, if I can make this nine ball, I got to use top. But that's going to take me like towards the three and the six ball. So I got to use left spin with the top as well to try not to hit those balls. I want to come up to the top half of the table if I can for that eight ball. So top left. I want to avoid running into his balls, but I may have to I may have to hit him. Hmm. I think I can still cut it from here, but it's thin. It's thin. Yeah, I tapped it pretty quick, so I must be able to still make it. Must still be able to make it. Thing cut. Watch the scratch. Ah, that's going. That's in the drink. Bah. Bah. When you're when you're playing somebody who only needs two games and you give them one of those games, no good, man. Now I need two. He needs one. You know, and it's his break. It looks like it was dry. I think his break was dry. I didn't see nothing fall in there. What am I going to take here? Probably stripes because those three solids up here are the only balls on the whole table you have to really worry about. The 9 and 13 can be a little tricky, I guess, for solids. But as long as you get rid of the 9 early, the 13 turns into a real easy shot. You know, the only reason the 13 is difficult is because the 9. And you can make the 9. You know, the 8 ball might be a little tricky, but I could use the 9 ball last or the 13 last and shape the eight for that pocket I just made that stripe in. Good opportunity to run out here. Good up. I was hoping to get that nine ball right there. That's why I was looking at it. Like I know in my mind I've got to get to that nine ball as soon as possible. Otherwise it can end up being a problem. So I'm trying to get to it again here. I don't think I came out far enough. 
Nope. Dang it, I wish I would have though. Wish I would have. So I might be able to bank the 14 and then off of that, I may be able to shape the, the nine. Just depends on the angle of the bank. If I have to spin it, you know, it makes it harder uh, to shape the nine. The bank's not super hard uh, by itself, but the fact that I have to shape the nine makes it harder. Yeah, see, I had to spin. That left spin took the cue ball down off the rail. Now I might be in trouble, man. I got that eight ball in a more tough spot, and I still haven't got to my nine ball yet. I could try to get to the nine ball here, but that one ball is kind of right in my way. I got to draw below it or come across. Oh, and I got right behind it. Yeah, I was trying to draw below it. That's why I put my stick on the table. Now I'm hooked. I'm hooked. I hooked myself and I hooked him up. Quite the hooker I am. Quite the hooker. Man, oh man. All right, I'm gonna have to kick at it and I'm probably gonna kick it hard um, just to try to make something happen, you know? The combo could go, I could end up making a carom um, into that other corner past his two solids. There's a lot of things that can happen if I hit it hard here. So I'm definitely gonna kick at it firm. More than firm, probably hard. No, just firm. Okay. Well, if if I didn't leave my shot on that six ball, then it would have been a really good leave. But I think he can see that six pretty clear. I think there's plenty of room to make it. But he's, again, okay guys, we saw this in, in another rack he played earlier. He didn't even look up there at those three solids. He hasn't even, watch his, watch his head, he hasn't even looked at him yet. Right now he's just looking for his next shot. So that's what you don't want to do when you're, when you're playing eight ball. Don't just look for your next shot. Look at the table, see where your problems are, and figure out a way to get to those problems. That's what you have to do when you're playing eight ball. He still hasn't looked at him yet. Oh, he just now looked at him. He just now looked at him. And you know why? Because it's the next shot. Once he makes the five, he has to make one of them. So that's why he looked at him finally. Um, but you don't want to do that. You want to look at those right off the bat, scan the whole table when you come up. And if you see any problems, you want to develop a plan in your mind to get to those problems. See, had he made that five ball there, he wouldn't have had nothing. Wouldn't have had nothing. See, like right away, I know I have a shot, but I look to see where that 13 can go. Does it go in the corner? If it does, I know I have a, a certain way I can play it. If it doesn't, I have to play it a different way. You just, that's how you have to look at the table when you're playing eight ball. You can't just look at your shots. That's the biggest downfall to lower skill level players is they just look at their shots. So I knew that wouldn't go in the corner, so I had to play it two rails back into the side pocket. From here though, I can stop shot this. Easy shot on the eight. No doubt I'm gonna, I'm gonna win this rack. Unless, <laughs> I can never say no doubt when I'm shooting, you know, because I miss a lot of stupid shit, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we're hill hill, race to one, guys. This is what it comes down to. Skill level three versus skill level seven. It all comes down to this one game. You know, that's the problem with playing a low skill level. Only needs two, see, and then I scratched. Scratched on the break. He could beat me here, you know? He could beat me here. The one plus I have is it's ball in hand behind the line. If it were ball in hand anywhere, he could take those uh, stripes, and he could be looking pretty good, I think. But it's not the easiest run out in the world, even with ball in hand behind the line. For a three, it's definitely a tough run out here. We'll see what he does. He's going to take the solids. Can't blame him for that. The starter shot on a stripe is long. You know, it's not super hard, but it's long, which makes it hard. All right, he's gonna draw this back. He'll probably have either the seven next if it goes past the stripe, or he can shoot the six and then shoot the seven in the other corner. It definitely goes in between uh, the nine and 12 or whatever they are there. I always mix up the 12 and 14 ball. Why do I do that? One's purple, one's green, you know? Idiot, man. Can't even remember my num color by numbers, you know? All right, he's gonna follow this for the seven in the other corner. He's playing this right so far. Oh, he hit it hard. 
He got a good bump on that nine. He got a good rub on the nine ball. He hit that one a bit hard too, though. He could have very easily ended up with a real tough shot here. He's got to be careful what to do with these other two balls, though. Oh, he hooked himself. I can't say I'm too disappointed because I'm his opponent here, but I feel bad for him. You know, he was making a good run out there, and he hooked himself. What's he going to do, though? I mean, he's looking at it. Oh, he's called a coach, called a coach. Smart. Oh, he's looking like he can go, if he can go in between the 9 and the 15, he should be able to make a good solid hit on these at least. Okay, he's measuring up to make it. He's measuring up what's called a mirror shot here. You take the hit point and you double the distance. So the hit point, you measure the hit point to the rail. Then you double that distance and that's, your, that's where you aim. I did a video on it. Go check it out. I'm not going to explain it now. Little Timmy. Pull up my old video. It's a short how to make a kick shot, I think it's called, if you want to find it. See, measured it, doubled it, and where his finger's at, it's now the aiming point. Right there is his aiming point, so he thinks. Looks pretty good, though. If he can get between there, he's he's going to make a good hit. and he. I'd say more likely to make it in this corner by the camera than the other corner, but I guess it's possible to make it anywhere, really. Important thing is to hit it and not give me ball in hand. He made it. He made it. It was a good shot. He left himself with a bank, though. I mean, it's not really a whole lot he could. He couldn't control a shape there where he was going to leave himself. See what I mean, guys? This guy's a good three. He's a real good skill level three. Even under pressure right now, where Hill Hill, he was hooked, you know? He bared down and made that shot. So he's a, um, he's a solid three. He'll go up soon. If he changed a couple uh, mechanical points, like the way his stroke is and stuff, he'd go up a lot quicker, but he's, uh, he's a good shot. He hooked himself on the nine. I don't know if he has another timeout left or not. Um, he hooked himself. Yeah, he does. Here comes his coach. He's got to try to kick at this one, I guess, you know. Oh, he's doing the same thing. He's trying to kick it again. He made the last one. If he makes this one, he beats me, you know. If he doesn't, then it's highly likely I'll beat him. If he tries to cut this one the same way he did the last one, he'll probably hit that nine first. This is one you should try to make in the other corner. Don't try to cut it up into that corner. You try to kick it into this corner by the camera, the one closest to the camera, the one closest to you guys over there. Okay, he's got his aiming point. He's going to kick at it. Bad hit. Bad hit, and he's going to... Oh, he almost lost on a bad hit right there. Okay, now I got ball in hand. I got ball in hand. I should be able to win this. <laughs> should. Uh, anytime you give skill level seven, even sixes, you know, ball in hand, and there's five balls left on the table... Uh, plus the eight, and it's open, no other balls, they should get out. And they don't always get out. I don't always get out for damn sure. In fact, I probably barely get out 50% of the time because I suck, you know. But supposed to get out here. Not supposed to lose from here. Stunned over for the nine. Now I can either, I'll probably just stop right there or maybe draw back a little bit, and I can either I can shoot either the 10 or the 15 next. Where the eight ball's sitting, it really doesn't matter which way I play this as long as I make all my shots. It doesn't even matter which way I go, you know. I just have to make sure to, to shape correctly and make my shots, because the, the eight ball, you can make it blindfolded, blindfolded, probably one-handed with a cue stick shoved up your ass, you still make that shot, you know. So it really doesn't matter. Just don't do nothing stupid here, like scratch, you moron. I tried. I tried to scratch like an idiot, but I didn't. So this is what happens, guys. It was our call up. We put me up. I'm a seven, and they chose to put a three up against me. So this is the outcome of that. You don't see that too often in eight ball. You see it in nine ball, but not eight ball too much. But now you guys know. You know, let me, let me know down below. Leave a comment. Let me know if you like that. 
I know it's different, right? A seven play and a three, but uh, let me know what you thought. Uh, don't forget to hit like. Definitely subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time around. Peace.